Aroma Joe's coffee continues to grow outside New England. This is a big trend in franchising. In the food and beverage space in general, having a small footprint kiosk with drive through So you're seeing this with coffee, you're, you're seeing it with some food and beverage concepts and prototypes being rolled out by Taco Bell, KFC, but Aroma Joe's Coffee, I love the simplicity of the model. Before we go into the model, how they make money, how much money they're making, a little background on the brand. It was founded in 2000 by four cousins that were from Maine. They opened up the first location across the river in New Hampshire. They're branded as being the local destination, handcrafted coffee, espresso drinks, unique flavor infusions, drive-through centric concept. They're in the middle ground between Duncan, super fast service, and Starbucks, which tends to be slower speed. It reminds me a little bit of, of Dutch Bros and kind of the culture that Dutch Bros has created principally on the West Coast. Aroma Joe's is in a similar niche, starting in New England, and they've really started to make footprint where traditionally Duncan was, was king. But as they're differentiated and as they move down the coast, open it up, we're, we're going to be tracking them very closely. So as I mentioned, founded by four cousins, Marty and Tim McKenna and Mike and Brian Sillon. Now they're not longer involved in the day-to-day -day affairs of the business. Aroma Joe's CEO, Lauren Goodridge, moved from being the company's first franchisee in 2012 to taking over as CEO of the entire system just, just six years later. At his peak, Goodridge had 30 Subway restaurants. Um, as of a couple years back, he was down to 19. Not bad. On the first Aroma Joe's location, apparently Fred DeLuca, one of the founders of Subway, the franchise brand, co-invested in Lauren's first Aroma Joe's franchise location. Aroma Joe's really caters to the owner and operators. They want people involved in the business. And we see a similar trend with Dutch Bros and a few other coffee franchises in space. Initial franchise fee to open up a, a Aroma Joe's, 12,000 to 25,000, not bad. They do have a high equipment charge that you, you have to pay to them, the franchise or 100,000 to $185,000. Then you have to pay 8,000 to $30,000 from the sign. So I don't know how much margin they're making there. Good questions to ask. And the total investment, 283,000 up to a million. You need to have at least minimum liquid capital of 150,000. Royalty, 8%, which is a little high. Food and beverage is closer to five or six usually. Marketing fee, 2.5 to 4.5%. Median sales in 2021 were 854,000, which if you only invested 200, 300, 400, 500,000 dollars, you're making your capital back fast, probably in five years. However, if you invested closer to 650, 700, 800,000 dollars, it's going to take over seven years to recoup your capital investment. That being said, we're running these numbers as if you weren't physically in the location every day and you had multiple locations and each location had a day-to-day -day manager and you had like a 15, 20% profit margin. However, if you're running the business and you're in a day-to-day, -day, you could expect a take home significantly higher, therefore getting your money back faster. Also, if you're buying the plot of land, developing the kiosk, selling uh, the, the plot of land and, and doing a sales lease back, you can also get your money back faster. So, I mean, come on, if you can compete with Duncan in New England, open for a lot less money, and you have a CEO that was the first franchisee of this brand and has grown it to over 100 locations, it's worth a further look. I'm curious to speak to any Aroma Joe's franchisees. Hear your feedback. Shoot me an email at patrick at vettedbiz.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you.